What's up, you two? Today, I'm going to teach you how to get sub 3 on Mega Minx. So, I would recommend you watching this video if you average around 3 minutes on Mega Minx. So, with that being said, let's get right into this video. So, for the star, I recommend you getting used to the color scheme. And during inspection, try to look for all the 5 star pieces. So, for the color scheme, remember this. Green, red, blue, yellow, and purple with white on top. Now for uh, the five star pieces, I see one, two, three, four, and five. So try to look for all five pieces during inspection. So I see the white green needs to go here. White red here, white blue here, white yellow here, and white purple it needs to go here. So for F to L. We need to memorize the Mega Minx color scheme just like in the star step. And you need to get used to F12 pairs. So you need to get used to white, blue, and yellow, white, yellow, purple, and white, purple, and green. It's just like 3x3 F12, but instead of having four pairs, you have five. So here's an example of Mega Minx F12. So I see this white, purple, and green corner. I need to find the green and purple edge. edge. So it's right here. So what I'm going to do is move it here. Then I can just do an R U prime R prime to create an F12 pair. Then I'm going to do something like this to insert it. And I see this right here. I can create an F12 pair and insert it here. I see this one and this one, I'm going to move it next to the corner, I'm going to insert it, I see this one, and there's the red and green edge there, I'm going to move it next to the corner. And I'm going to create an F12 pair. Insert it. And I see this one and this one. And as you, we can see, F12 is solved. For S12, pick an order and get used to it. For example, I'm going to get used to the blue yellow, purple, green, and red order. So for blue, I see this one. I can insert here. I'm going to insert this here. And I'm going to create an F12 pair by creating with these two. I'm going to create another one with these two. I'm going to create another one with this one. And this one. I'm going to move on to yellow. This one here.
Now here's where it gets, gets a bit tricky. So I want to insert this here, but if I do something like a U, it will mess up the blue. So what I'm going to do is rotate here, then do an F, then insert it. Then I can just do F12. And I'm just going to insert here. And this one, this one. And for the last color, you just need to insert the F12 pair. So you see this one and this one. And as we can see, S12 is solved. So for OLL, you just need to orient the edges and then the corners. So we'll just orient the edges like how you do on a normal 3x3. And for orienting the corners, we're going to be doing something different. So how you do on a normal 3x3 when using the beginner's method, we use the acronym R'D'RD. So we'll use it on the Megaminx. So we'll use R'D'RD, 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 R'D'RD. And once it's oriented, we're going to move it away until we see a corner that's not oriented. So we'll do the algorithm R'D'RD, R'D'RD until you have OLL solved. Now for PLL, we're going to be permuting the edges first and then permuting the corners. So for permuting the edges, if you have two opposite edges that are in the right place, we'll do this algorithm. R2, U2 prime, R2 prime, U prime, R2, U2 prime, R2. If it doesn't work, you can do that algorithm one more time, then you'll have all the edges in the right spot. Now if you have two adjacent edges that are solved, I mean in the right place, we're going to do this algorithm. R, U, R prime, F prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R2, U prime, R prime. And, if it, and again, if it doesn't work, do the algorithm one more time, and then you'll have all the uh, edges in the right spot. So for permuting the corners, we'll use two algorithms. One is for taking out the corner, and another is for putting the corner in the right spot. So for taking out the corner, we're going to use this algorithm, R prime, D prime, R, and find it where it needs to go. So it needs to go here. So we'll do a U2 prime. Then we'll do this algorithm to insert it. R prime, D, R, and it's here. Now we're not done yet. We have some other corners to put in the right spot. So I have this one. I'm going to do the algorithm to take it out of its spot. I'm going to do a U prime and put it in the right spot. I'm going to do a U. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to do a U2 prime, put it in, and then your Megaminx is solved. Now here are some three extra tips for set three on Megaminx. So the first tip I'm going to give you is to slow down your turning to look ahead more, because in my personal opinion, look ahead is way better than turning fast, because if you turn really fast, it can result in lots of pausing, which can slow you down. So the second tip I want to give you is to improve your hardware. So don't use something like this Shang Shao Megaminx. It has horrible turning. It's not that fluid. It's good that it doesn't pop. But the worst thing about this cube is the corner cutting. The corner cutting is really shitty. For regular corner cuts, up to here. But reverse cuts are is what the Shangsha Megaminx lacks most. 
So if you quark at like 10 degrees, it won't go. And it's due to the lack of fluorine cuts. Now, a Mega Wings that I would recommend is the Galaxy V1 or V2 Mega Wings. It's a really good Mega Wings, in my opinion. I also recommend the magnetic versions of these two Mega Wingses. Corner cutting is really good due to the flooring cuts. Popping did not occur on this cube due to the torpedoes. But if you're on a budget, get something like the Chi Chi Hang S Mega Minx sculpted version. It's just like the Galaxy V1 or V2 Mega Minx, but it's a bit worse. It's more bigger than the Galaxy, and it's a lot less fluid. And the corner cutting is a bit bad than the Galaxy Mega Minx. But still, this is a really good Mega Minx. The last tip I'm going to give you is to stop timing your solves. Whenever I see people timing their solves, they average what they normally average. But when you stop timing your solves, you start learning more ways and algorithms to be more efficient. And once you start getting more familiar with those new ways and algorithms, you start to improve a lot. So that is it for my tutorial on how to get sub 3 on Megaminx. Hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.